Hey guys, welcome back to the fifth episode of this Satisfactory Let's Play. I want to get started over in this area. Um, I know we are looking at the concrete factory, but it's actually behind me. So uh, off camera, I've been working on something for a couple of hours, just trying to design it. It's not a finished product. It still is a rough design, but it's this. This is going to be our roadway network that we're going to be installing uh, a good portion of a lot of this during today's episode. Um, as you can see with our to-do list, it's going to be the uh, tractor and truck roadways. Now this roadway has multiple functions. Right underneath this uh, steel uh, wall that you see here is actually going to be a hypertube entrance. Um, this hypertube entrance won't be available for all locations, just kind of main areas. So like this main area is going to be for the concrete and you know steel production area. And then of course we'll have one that leads to our iron products over there and so forth um but yeah we'll we'll have it set up so you can run right through here and then of course our road network right here um of course i'll paint these roads as well um and then we have our light fixtures but what's really cool about this roadway network and oh and of course right above us this roof area uh will be train accessibility so once we unlock monorails um I'm not necessarily going to dedicate a lot of these roofs to uh, train networks, but at least it's here in case I want to put a train on here. But uh, one of the other functions that I wanted was uh, I, I, with lots of other Let's Plays that you see, a lot of people will build um, big battery backup storage systems. And I thought it would be fun to build our battery backup system in our road network or what will eventually become um, a, a monorail network as well. And so I, I thought it would be fun to incorporate batteries into this build. So wherever we have a road or a monorail network, we'll also have batteries. So um, we'll have lots and lots and lots of battery backup storage um, in this gameplay. And it will be, it'll be very nice. Oh, there we go. So, um... If I wanted to, oh, let me also kind of focus on a couple of other cool things here. So, I uh, I believe I told you guys during the last episode, I'm thinking about putting up here or somewhere over here the um, space elevator, as well as its permanent factory uh, setup. I'm also planning on doing something fairly similar to what Kibitz does, and I'll also be putting my hub over there as well. As well as, you know, in case I die, I'll have some backup storage for, say, you know, uh, blade runners, jetpacks, and fuel, and um, what are these medical inhalers and so forth. I'll ha just have a bunch of backups of all that kind of stuff all over there. But what's going to be really cool is with how I have this stuff designed, I'll be able to control all the lighting as well as the hypertube network. Uh, through um, power switches and so forth at the hub. So if we if we take a peek underneath this, you'll notice that I'll have this uh, connected through its own dedicated line underneath. And then I'll have the same thing done for the lights. So you can see how I've kind of got the lights connected here. And then they're also on their own uh, line here. So this right here is connected to this line, which is only connected to the lights. You can see the batteries are connected to their other line as well. So if I end up start, starting to run into power issues, which if you take a look, we, we're kind of hitting. I mean, this is what uh, our second episode with the coal power plant. And we're already more than half of its consumption. So we're, we're using a lot of power. Um but we are getting close to moving on to the next phase and we'll be able to do some fuel power um, and i've got big plans for a massive fuel power plant off in this direction over here um, utilizing every single node to make fuel and of course if i had the capability the diluted fuel uh, recipe i believe it's a heavy oil residue and diluted fuel both of those alternate recipes and apparently you can make some big power with that not to mention, I believe there is also, so there's some sulfur over here, and then there's also sulfur up here with some coal. 
So I'll be able to use, or sorry, sulfur up here and coal right up here, I believe. Um, so I'll be able to truck in sulfur and coal to make compacted coal, which is another alternate recipe to make turbo fuel. So we'll, we'll have a, hmm, we'll make a prediction. I'd say if we have all the alternate recipes, so compacted coal, heavy oil residue, and diluted fuel, if we have all of those recipes, I predict we could probably make with just those oil nodes over there, mm, 20 to 40 gigawatts of power. Let's say that. Could be more, could be less, but I'm gonna say 20 to 40 gigawatts of power. And right now we're only making five, so that's a huge jump in power. But I think that's what we're gonna make. So again, everything is on its own dedicated line. So if I end up using too much power, um, I'll be able to manually shut off, you know, the the lights and then if i'm not really using the the um uh hyper tubes hyper tubes just passively consume power so i'll also have those being able to be turned on and off just depending on whether or not i'm going to use them to help conserve power so that's what we're looking at i have marked an area over here let's jump down um because i believe the first thing we're going to work on is building um, our reinforced plate factory and I have that marked right over here we're gonna have to just just hop skip and jump it's not too far it's right over here basically it's where we had our old space elevator so you can see future our plates factory so right just right past where mr. bean is right over here beans We'll have the uh, reinforced plate factory right here. We'll have it lifted so that way the obstructions aren't uh, aren't there. What up, doggo? And uh, oh, can we actually grab this doggo? Yeah, let's. Uh, oh, come on. Let's split it. Uh, let's put this one right here. Hey, where, where's doggo? Where did doggo go? Doggo. It was just here. Uh, doggo? I want a pet. Oh. Oh, there he is. Hey, doggo. Hey, doggo. Hello? Hey, doggo. Oh. Okay, now that we have him here, we drop the berries. Oh, I think I have to get further away. Let's grab some more berries just in case. Come on, come on, come on. I know we're getting sidetracked, but it's a doggo. Hey. 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 Okay, come on, come on. Let's, oh, come on. Do I have to, like, drop one berry? Come on. <gasps> Woo! He ate it. Now do I... <gasps> Yay! We've got a doggo! We've got a doggo! Oh my gosh. Hello, doggo! Oh, uh, what a good doggo. Here, hold some more berries. There you go. Okay. Uh, uh, press E if lizard doggo has found anything. I guess I guess I need to take those from him. All right. Hey, we we've pet a doggo. He's gonna be our friend now. He's gonna follow us. Oh my gosh, we have a doggo. Oh, what up, doggo? Oh, are you not coming anymore? Come here, doggo. Yeah, let's go. Let's go take a look at our future iron uh, reinforced plates. Come on, doggo. Oh, you're so cute. So, Doggo, this is where we're going to put the uh, the reinforced plates right here. I hope you enjoy that. All right, Doggo. 
you just go ahead and stay right here and uh i'll get to building i'll see you guys in a minute okay i know you got sidetracked there with the doggo and we're getting sidetracked just a little bit more i put him in this cage right next to the hub here and i clipped uh my storage unit right here with, with the wall and it looks like a little dog house <laughs> i'm sorry all right i i need to get back to actually building because you guys are here to watch some building but you know, the doggo has a dog house now right yeah okay okay see you guys in a minute okay so after probably what three or four painstaking hours we finally have this monstrosity um let's just go ahead and take a quick peek at what we've got the design on this is not finished but uh nevertheless it will function so let's go ahead and hop inside we got these uh funky stairs here so uh right now we just have eight uh assemblers we could handle uh 10 in a bit but um i just decided to make it look you know even and nice and so forth so everything is hooked up as far as the logistics go so um what we've got here is uh we've got the power hooked up we've got uh this will be this should be connected to the screws uh, from the uh, tractor station out there and then of course the iron plating here um, as you can see the uh, disbursement is uh, connected underneath um, but what's really nice is this is also compatible as a vertical manifold <laughs> so when we're ready uh, to uh, when we get more iron plates and stuff like that we, we obviously have enough screws but once we, we, our limitation here is the iron plates once we have more iron plates we'll be able to uh, add more floors and so we'll connect them uh, right here so the inputs so instead of the merger going this way upstairs the merger will go that way um, and then we'll bring them down this way and then uh, with the um, belt work for the inputs here uh, obviously it's the same thing we'll just have you know the belt go up to the next floor um, and so forth and um, it's a i guess just vertical manifold compatible so it's super nice when we want to expand our reinforced plate production which we will more than likely do once we have the monorail system where we can pick up from multiple stations and just and make things a lot easier um we could set up you know another uh iron plate production off in the distance i believe there's actually a pure iron node somewhere up here um and then we could just you know build a road system that gets there but uh i don't think we need that much production plus again we we are using more than half of our coal power plant already so um just want to stick within the means until we can get the space elevator up finish those objectives get the monorail system and the fuel power system as well um but as far as the logistics underneath let's take a look at that um, it's not pretty, but it's functional. So the screws, I believe, will come in from here. And so they go into this splitter. This, uh, this splitter right here goes to that setup and then goes to that setup. And then right here, it splits off over into this splitter right on over here. And then splits off into those other, um, uh what you might call them assemblers and then of course right here we have the input for the iron plates and those will come in and we have this splitting that way and that way and then this comes down and splits off that way and that way so that's what we've got underneath let's uh hop back oh let's hop back upstairs and talk about what we need to get done to get this thing up and running i do already have it connected to power so literally all I have to do is just get inputs. So the first thing I want to do is we need fuel to power our tractors, which I have right here, the coal input. And then the coal input actually goes underneath. So you can see it goes down and it will fuel each of these uh, truck stations here. So um, we'll have the truck uh, trucks start here. And then, you know, the uh, iron plates will travel to this building right over there. Okay. and then the screws will have a bridge or um, a roadway that goes down to this building 
right over there to pick up the screws. And then we'll just have the output right here. And again, um, let me actually activate this right here. Uh, highlight marker. Let's see if we can get a look at this. Uh, I might have to go down. Let's see, can we get a look at it? Uh, I'll just jump down. So right over there is where I'm thinking the future uh, modular frame factory is going to go. I do need to start spreading out um, the uh, buildings. Oh, you can see it right there, how we're starting to get just a little bit of frame drop and, and frame loss. So I need to spread out some of these factories a bit. Um, so that way, you know, we have we have clean um, footage. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get working on the road network to connect to our fuel station over here actually go ahead and tear down this assembler we used that during the last episode so i need to get connected to the, to the fuel station and then we'll use the same roadway from the fuel station for the iron plates as well um and then a roadway to from the um screws all the way up there so i will see you once i have that done and then we can actually talk about how we actually program and automate tractors i'll see you then Okay guys, uh, I have laid down the road network. I haven't done any of the design. It's just the bare bones right now, but I've got the road network down. I've already done one of the uh, tractor pathways um, and that's for the coal because um, I, I want to have coal up and running so that way, you know, this process works. Um, let me just make sure did I put, let me put some coal in this thing real quick. A couple of things to note when you're doing a pathway um the nodes which you'll see it'll be blue for when you're moving um and then there's uh as you're recording there's a finish line which will be right here when we start the recording um you'll see that and then there's gonna be a pause button once you dock right here at the um, station so one thing to note when it comes to nodes and docking stations nodes do not populate except for the uh pause node uh, inside of this um, uh, build area. So see the uh, outline right there for uh, the clearance area. Uh, those blue travel nodes do not spawn in here, which causes an issue for um, spacing. So that's why when you're building these, you'll want to build enough space on the outside. Uh, so that way, when your tractor comes in this way, a node can spawn right here. Uh, showing that you're traveling in this direction and then only the plus or sorry the only the pause icon will will be right here and then uh, as you leave you can have a, a slightly angled node and, and I'll, I'll explain this as we're doing this so that way you have a, a, a fluid um, motion now when we get up top I didn't really leave a lot of space but that's okay what's really nice about I, I believe this was done during update 6 uh, they did a lot of bug fixes with trucks and tractors when it comes to nodes so if it gets stuck just give it a second and it will turn into like a ghost mode like the actual vehicle will turn blue and then it will just force it it'll defy physics and it will force it back onto the path so you don't really have to worry about making it perfect but let me hop in here and let me show you a couple of things, some tips and tricks to try and make this look as realistic as possible and also super functional and not so buggy. So we're going to press Q. We're going to open this up. We're going to start recording. Now we can start moving. When you're coming up on turns, I like to go slow around them. So that way, you know, you get those blue check marks right there and those blue nodes to come in just uh, to come in at, at, at a nice angle. Now we're going to go ahead and turn right in and then we're going to stop. We're going to press F to let this thing load. Once this thing is done loading, we will then move. Okay, it's done loading. We're going to move slowly. Now I know those nodes are showing up during the recording, but once we stop the recording, those nodes will disappear. So again, we're going around a corner, so we're going to go slow. So that way nodes populate, makes it look not, look. look look nice again around another corner we're gonna you know move a little slower and then now that we're on a straight way we'll just full throttle it all the way okay 
Okay. Now we're coming into another corner, so we're going to slow down. So that way we populate a fair amount of nodes. So we have a nice and smooth transition. You can see how that tractor right there is going a little slower, but it's doing a proper turn. It's exactly what's going on here. Okay, so we've got screws. So we're going to go around in this corner. We're going nice and slow. So that way we populate proper nodes. And we're going to turn in this way. And we'll go in right here and press F. Very good. And now let's go ahead and move this around. Now I may not have fixed the uh, um, the actual stations to load it properly, but that doesn't really matter. So now we're here, we're just gonna go as slow as possible there, okay? Now that we're on a straight, we can move uh, quick. And then we're coming up to another corner. And those nodes, we just need to populate. There we go. Then we're on a straight and move forward. We can come down here. Now, I do like to break when we're going downhill and kind of separate the, get the nodes closer. Uh, because sometimes the, the tractor will go off path. And that's no good. Okay, we have completed the recording. So now all we have to do is just save the recording. And we're going to call this screws. Um, and then we'll do something like this. And then to R dash plates. Just like that. Okay, and save. And then just to make sure we have it loaded. Yep, looks like that is loaded. And then we will press you again and enable autopilot press escape press e and now we are off to the races okay so while we're doing that let's check make sure we have this yep it is load so that's perfect and we shall see see how eh, it's still buggy um i noticed when it's doing its first run it's buggy but once it gets on to its second run, um, so once it completes that route one more time, it does tend to fix itself almost as if it optimized. So, okay, so this is on load, which is exactly what we want. Now let's run up here to uh, the reinforced plate factory. You, you can see the nodes there. We will turn these off here in a second. And make sure that this right here is on unload. So this is telling you what you want the vehicle to do. Do you want the vehicle to unload? Yes, you want the vehicle to unload. And in this situation right here, you know, I want those um, reinforced plates to load. And... I want uh, I want this one right here to unload the coal. So let's watch this vehicle come back in. See how it's taking that turn. Yeah, it is a little slower. I have some ideas and tips to make vehicle pathing better. But now again, notice, see right here, we used to have travel nodes right here and now they're gone. This is why you want to space out your um, tractor station so that way you can populate nodes on the outside of the clearance. See, because now he's facing this way and when he wants to leave, he wants to face this way right here. So, one thing to note as well, because this is a mistake I uh, made when I first started using tractors. When you're recording and you're moving and, you know, your vehicle starts to turn a little bit and you're worried about, okay, if I press... You know left or right it's gonna do that and repeat itself uh, that's not the case think of these nodes as a leash okay so if this leash is now pulling him this leash is now pulling him this leash is now pulling him okay so the data of whether you you pressed a or, or, or left or right is not stored in the node it's just a leash and it's pulling the vehicle and then it gets to the next node and it pulls the vehicle it's the next node and it pulls the vehicle so when it gets to this point it's trying to pull and slightly turn it because it's at uh, this node is at an angle so that is what it's doing so don't make that mistake that i did worrying about pressing 
left or right and it re records that data it doesn't really if you're going straight and you're doing a slight course correction it doesn't really save that but see now we have these nodes on the outside because we gave ourselves a little extra space and then it turns in like that look at that so this is why you want space between your uh, tractor stations okay once this is done loading we should see it pull out nice and fine and in, indeed it looked like it did see what i see what i told you guys right there how you do have to let it run and then it kind of fixes fix, uh, fixes itself that's exactly what happened so now that we have this thing off to the races let's uh i got one more i gotta do i'll just do that off camera and then we will blip back to uh when we have the reinforced plates running so i'll see you guys then okay got everything set up here i um, still need to do the decorating of the roads and all that but you can see our factory is fully functioning uh i was sitting here for a little while we are not seeing any loss um or stop in production so looks like one truck uh per uh tractor station or truck station is enough to fully uh function this entire system so i don't need to add multiple trucks or tractors here um and uh yeah we are starting to rack up the reinforced plates uh with that here uh i think yeah what we've got as far as uh we've got this done for sure 100 percent uh i say we have the tractor stations done um of course we will need to do more tractor stations as we do other builds and start moving products around one of the other things though with this um these tractors may end up becoming obsolete um so what i what i might end up doing is just tearing them down and just belting it over um but i wanted to show you guys the tractors because the, the tractors are fun um and they do have lots of use cases um believe it or not the the um when i completed the game several months ago with a bunch of friends on the server um the, i i actually built in this area um but i actually brought uh concrete over here and i built a little road that kind of went down this way um over to a steel production that i had over there um and so that way i could make encased industrial beams so i had uh, out of all of my factories that i had i had one tractor that brought uh concrete over here to uh to make um uh encased industrial beams most of the stuff that i'll do um in this situation i would i would actually just belt it from the screw factory to here and then belt it from the iron uh plates factory to here um and then anything long distance i would build a monorail system for but obviously we're not there yet so and i thought it would be fun to showcase how the tractors work and all that stuff so uh i say we have all that done um yeah tractors slash truck roadways yeah let's just call that done um next thing we need to do is to update the uh concrete factory yeah see right here you can see that guys it got stuck oh and it's still stuck w watch it correct itself my guess is that tractor caused it to um have a little bit of an issue but don't rest assured though uh usually when nodes intersect and there's trucks uh next to it the lead truck so the truck and uh, the tractor in front will usually move and then the truck behind it will stop until the node is clear. Um, that's generally what happens. But again, tractors and trucks are still very buggy in this game. But um, still very functional. As you can see, it's now back off of the races. So it's still a very functional and very useful case form of transportation. But as far as the concrete, uh, I'm not going to show this on camera. But I'll just quickly explain what I'm doing. Because... Uh, I think we're actually out of time or maybe overtime. Um, I was just looking at the amount of recording that I have here and I, I think we might actually be over time. Um, again, guys, this is what the uh, uh, this is what the roadways will look like. We'll have the batteries and so forth there. Um, but as far as uh, the completed, as far as updating the concrete, um, basically what I need to do is I need to um, put Mark two miners down because these are Mark ones. Then I need to overclock them. 
and then I'm not going to do a vertical manifold. And, and in fact, even when we get to Mark three, I'm not going to update this because we're going to have so much concrete from this. It's not even funny. And when I need more concrete, I'll probably have a concrete factory closer to whatever I need to make it. So um, with that being said, uh, I'll just connect the power lines to these that are already set up. Um, and then I'll just update the belts to uh, Mark threes and so forth. So that way we've got proper um, a proper setup there. And then uh, I'll just update these to um, industrial bins and I'll actually probably extend this out to make to, to have more storage. So that's all I'm going to do. So nothing exciting, um, but uh, we are out of time, I believe. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I had a blast doing this. We got a doggo at the beginning. That was so much fun. Um, and then we've got our reinforced plates done. And uh, with that bombshell, like and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to turn on that bell notification. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.